couldn't be back in the house of the Lord this morning. And I would like to mention this morning as we are thanking and praying to remember Sister Millie. Amen. Uh, she's, uh, I don't know, I don't know really how her condition is, but I know she needs the prayers of the, of the church and uh, she's got a lot of faith in her and uh, with this, this transplant and, uh, and the other things that's wrong with her. So you all remember her and pray for her earnestly. And uh, I know if we, if we come honestly to the Lord, you will certainly hear our prayers. Amen. you will hear our prayers. And uh, I'm convinced of that this morning and I'm convinced of it always. Amen. When I, when I bow my head to the Lord, I always get uh, a good result. And uh, it may not be in the way I think it should be, but it's it's the way that he wants it. And so I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I'm satisfied. We want to study this morning a little bit in the book of Luke. If you would be turning to chapter 16 concerning a rich man and his steward. It's, it's, uh, it's quite a... It's quite a task to uh, to uh, spread all of this out or separate it out like that it should be, and how that you could compare it, because uh, a lot of a lot of times uh, people want to compare and say, well, this is the way it is with God and with those that are serving Him or those that that quit serving Him. Uh, and, and I'm not here to say how how this should go because uh, Jesus didn't explain it when He told us to the first uh, to the to the disciples, but he just told them there was a certain rich man. Mm -hmm. Didn't say what his name was, didn't even say if there was one that existed, but he said there was one, and there was also a steward. He didn't give no details on the steward that much, and so, but he did say this, that uh, he told the disciples from time to time, and they asked him uh, over in Matthew, I believe it is, about why that he talked to them in parable. And he explained to them that you can understand and know what I'm talking about and others that didn't, I'm not talking to, they don't know it. They don't understand it. And this is the same way it is with the parables. He used these parables to speak to our hearts. Amen. He used these parables to demonstrate things that are going on in this world and listen, Every time that he speaks uh, a parable, it's for our benefit, and, and we need to really get down and get a hold of it and chew on it and chew on it and try to understand it because there is a message there, and uh, I know that I've not uh, got complete message on it. I know that, uh, but I hope that the, what what we read I know will be a blessing, and what we say you can consider it and uh, and think upon it. So. This morning in verse 1 of, of ch verse, uh, chapter 16, and he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer a steward. And so he is he is talking to this uh, his servant about what he was doing, and he was a rich man. And uh, we want us we want to identify what the rich man is. And when we when we speak, he speaks of another such rich man that I, I wanted to try to. Uh, talk to you a little bit about this morning. Another rich man that had all that he had all that he could hold, and the Lord had blessed him with every everything that he needed. He filled his buildings full, and the man was still not satisfied. Mm -hmm. And rich men, rich people, money, worldly things will cause this. And you say, "Oh no! If I had a million dollars, I'd be happy." No you wouldn't be happy. Right. Because listen, worldly possessions don't make you happy. They they make you uh, more at ease sometimes, but the thing of it is they don't make you happy. Mm -hmm. And this morning, this rich man said, hey, I've got all of this stuff. I'm going to go out and 
fill my barns and give the rest of it to the poor. No. That's what he should have done. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, I'm greedy. I'm, I'm, I, I love my riches, and so I'm going to tear down my barns, and I'm going to build me some bigger ones, mm -hmm. and I'm going to fill them up and say, so be happy, mm -hmm. and, and rest out, be at ease. Well, you know what I know about the scriptures and how it goes on, but the Lord said, thou fool, mm -hmm. thou fool. You're, 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 you're trusting in things of this world, and he said, it won't happen. It don't do you no good. Today, thy soul will be required of thee, and then whose will it be? Right. And so this morning, if we accumulate and we back up, build up everything, and we don't use uh, a lot of it for God's work and for his, his glory and all this, listen, and we just keep hoarding it up and keep hoarding it up and loving it, listen. It's not pleasing to God. Amen. And so I, I know I I like to I like to do these things, and I try to I try to counsel my soul, and this, but my spirit says, "Hey, you don't need to you don't need to build it up, though. You don't need to you don't need to trust it." Well, and I know that, and and so I ask the Lord to to help me with these things. But listen, it's the flesh, and sometimes the flesh just just eagerly wants to right. grab that and just poured it into them and say, hey, this is my God and this is my safety and all this. And it's not. Amen. And so don't don't get it in your mind this morning that you've got to have a bank full of money and that you've got to work and, and that you've got to do this and do that. Because listen, if you don't watch, you'll be clean out of church. Mm -hmm. You'll be, uh, and, and if you hear anything about it, the next thing you're going to say is, well, I'll go to another church. I'll get, I'll get down over that other church and I won't hear this. Listen, this is what this is what happened to the the steward here in this in this thing. Listen, he forgot who his boss was. He and he he was slipping money. I'm assuming that he was taking money from the from the till and putting it in his pocket because in this in this uh, reading here, he is worried about what he's going to do when he's when he's take the stewardship is taken away from him. He says, I can't dig. In other words, I, I've not been ever been used to working. I don't know how to work. And so he said, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. But then he thinks about this. But anyway, here's the lesson this morning. So the, so the certain rich man which had the steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Now, somebody, I, I, I'm assuming somebody had told the rich man about the deeds that his steward was doing because he said, he said, here he said, uh, uh, and he called him and said, how is it that I hear? And so somebody had, had told him. Mm -hmm. Now, I got to thinking about this and you know, this morning, if I see somebody uh, in church that I that the Lord impresses me that hey, they need your prayers. They're slipping. Mm -hmm. They're doing this and they're doing that. And listen, I don't I don't accuse nobody, but I do do this. I listen to what the Lord says, and if I go and pray for that person, uh, that's my way of 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 trying to help him. And somebody here evidently had seen this steward and the way that he was doing and started praying for him. Now that's the only way I can figure out that, and, and, or, and so somebody else went to this rich man and told him about this, one of the two. But anyway, the rich man found <coughs> out about it. And so this morning, when we do anything, when we, we quit serving the Lord like we should, and I'm not comparing the servant of the rich man to the Lord, but I'm just saying this. If there's a meaning here, there's something here that it warns us, hey, stay away, stay away from that loving that money and, and stay away from uh, serving the world because listen, it's not for you. It's not, it, it never was made for you. It's made for you to exist in, but this world and what it has is not yours and it's it's not for you to love and this steward you hear this steward, so he said in verse 2 and he called him and said unto him how is it that i hear this of thee and so somebody had told him give an account 
of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer a steward. And I don't know for sure what he's talking about when he says, give an account of thy stewardship, except, hey, what did you do? What have you been doing? How have you been cheating me? Or how have you not been serving me? And so this morning, uh, we he's, he's asking for this, to give him this, uh, 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 give him the, this, this is excuse. And listen, in this, in this, this morning, the, the rich man, the rich man knew what he was doing. And listen, the rich man probably had done the same thing in getting his wealth. And so in this, he said, uh, the rich man, when he, when he presented this problem, he didn't condemn him. He said in verse eight, the Lord and the Lord condemned the unjust steward, uh, because he had, uh, he commended, I'm sorry, and the, and the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. And now the thing of it is he done wisely worldly, but he did do wisely spiritually because had he have done this, first thing we're going to put a scene was the steward was saying, hey, I'm sorry, I won't do it no more or forgive me or whatever because, but you don't see any of that in this because the steward, the steward knew he was gone and he didn't have no job anymore. But I want to read something this morning, if, if, you, if you'll bear with me, as I find it in Ephesians 4. <clears throat> It's Ephesians and verse 4 and verse 31. Ephesians 4 and verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now, this, this describes the servant. He had this attitude towards the his his master that he could that he could do these things, and he he had bitterness against him, and he he wasn't doing the job they were supposed to. And you know, if you look over in 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 the scriptures, uh, you'll find out that the servants the servants did just exactly, and he used an uh, one place there where he said. If you have a servant and he's been out there in the field all day working and he comes in, will you tell him to sit down and eat or will you tell him to fix you something that you can eat and then he can eat? And so the servant was bound to his, his master and he's supposed to do just exactly what was told. So he said here in verse 32, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And so, you know, uh, as I mentioned a while ago, some, somebody may have seen this, this servant and, and cared for him enough and was tender-hearted enough for him that he prayed for him. And, uh, the, and, the, and, the, and his and master found it out. But here in our, back in our lesson now, in verse, verse uh, three, then the steward said within himself, this is, this is after he, he said, give, give an account of thy stewardship. And, and he, he said, I, I, I'm thinking he said, explain what happened. But anyway, then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. And that was an important job. And it was a job that evidently he lived comfortably with. And he didn't have to worry about working on this. He says, I, uh, he says, for my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig, and I, I'm assuming he's talking about working in the fields or whatever. To beg, I am ashamed because it brought him off of his pedestal. And so he said here, I am resolved. And he said, this is what he's saying what I will do. He's, he's convinced of what he will do. Now, those, when, when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. And here is, here is his way of, 
the world working with the world. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not you working a saved Christian working with the world because you can't depend on this. But he knew these other people that he had been selling to and probably was doing like he did here, giving them a little discount or or whatever. But anyway, he says, I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his debtor, lords, uh, debtors unto him, and said unto the first, how much owest thou unto the, my Lord? And so here we see, so he called every one of his Lord's debtors, and they were in, under the same Lord that he was under. They were under the same rich man that he was under. And he says, he asked him, how much thou, how, how much owest thou unto the Lord? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, take thy bill, Sit down quickly, hurry me. I don't want nobody to know about this. I'm, I'm doing this under the cover. This is his this was his attitude. He says, and write 50. And so he he cut his bill in half for that he could stay in good graces with this man that uh, that was working under the same one he was, and he knew that that this would be pleasing to him enough, and the reason he done it was or that when, when he lost his job, that he could go stay with them or he could eat with them or, or whatever it took to survive. And so here, the, 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 the thought is here, uh, you know, to do exactly what you have to do in order to get by in this world. Mm -hmm. and, 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 if, and if you love the world, you steal, you rob, you do any way you can to get by. And you use other people, and you use you steal from them. So here, this is the situation. And then he said to another in verse seven, "And how much owest thou?" And he said, "A hundred measures of wheat." And he said unto him, "Take thy bill and write four score, which is eighty. So he cut his bill too. And so here, here in verse eight, as I've done already mentioned. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. Now, to me, this puts the rich man and the steward on the same order, in the same line, because he commends him because he done unjust. And he, he, he robbed him. And so he said, hey, uh, I don't blame him. I've done the same thing. And so listen, this is what this is what worldly things will do. And so he said, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of life. And what is he saying here this morning? These old worldly people are as much smarter than the children of light or the children of God because listen, they they cannot depend when when the devil interferes with a, 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 a Christian's life. They cannot uh, depend on their brothers and sisters to help them as much as the, those that live in the world. Mm -hmm. if, they, if, that, if that's what makes sense. So he, this is the reason why that he, he commended him. And then in verse 9, he says, And I say unto you, make to yourself friends of the manna or the world of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. And this everlasting habitation uh, is, is, a, it is, is not what we're looking for because, listen, it's a man. Mm -hmm. And he uses the word manna. He says, and I say unto you, make your, to yourself friends of manna or to men, and the man represents the world of unrighteousness, that you may fail that they may receive you into everlasting habitation. So here is, here is the thing of this that Jesus is trying to tell these people. Listen, people of this world, they do things for their friends that think the same way and do the same way just in order to get uh, benefits from them or, or get help from them. And Christians... 
Christians sometimes will not help their brothers and sisters like they should, and uh, and God and Jesus is telling the disciples this this thing. So when He's talking to the disciples, He's saying, "Don't expect, don't expect the world to love you. Don't expect people just to run on you to get to you and to help you because listen, they won't do it. Right? Uh, this world will help its own. But uh, listen, it, it's a sad thing. But sometimes." Uh, Christian people that have uh, excess of, of whatever they need, they don't help their brothers and sisters that's in need. Mm -hmm. and, and it should not be that way. Amen. So here it is. And he and he that is faithful in what he at least is faithful, also in much, he that is unjust in least is unjust also in much. And that's in verse 10. So he says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So uh, the he's telling the difference between the just and the unjust. If therefore you have not been faithful in the un unrighteous manner and will, com and will commit to your trust the true riches, and if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Mm -hmm. And this is one of the most important things of this this morning. Listen, what you own is what God gives you. Yeah. And he's saying here, if you're not faithful in that, if you and, and he knows your heart, if you're not faithful in that, listen, he says here, uh, uh, let me read this to you. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous manner, who will commit to you? Who will commit to your truth the true riches? In other words, if you get in with the world or you you mistreat the uh, people in the world, listen. God gives you these riches, mm -hmm. and you need to use them. And listen. One of the things that I see in this is that when we go out here and we try to be a witness for for God and we don't we don't do what he says and we don't go to the ones that he would have us to go to and, and present him to them. Listen, we're not using his what he give us rightfully and we're wrong. Mm -hmm. And we're just as wrong as the, the unrighteous man. And we need we need to think upon these things that that we, when we have an opportunity to be a witness for the Lord, we need to do it, and we need to do it with a heart of love, and we need to do it, do it in the right manner, and not because that we want to gain uh, some kind of prestige with them, or but because that we love. Mm -hmm. And listen, people, if you if you can do that, you'll find out that the word comes out so much easier. Mm -hmm. You can tell them, and the Lord through the Holy Spirit will bring your remembrance to things that you could say to them that would help them and, and, and be a blessing to them. But uh, so many times, so many times we we listen to uh, other voices sometimes and we mm -hmm. say, well, uh, he's all right. I mean, he ain't gonna do nothing anyway. I'm just wasting my time. Listen, you're not, you're never, you're never wasting your time Amen. when you speak a word of, of truth to a man uh, that is lost or a man to say. Because sometimes, sometimes people get down that are saved. Uh, and I mean they get down. Mm -hmm. And just a word or two of encouragement or just a word or two from the scripture will turn a key on for them and, and, and will enlighten them and help them to get another mile in the road. And so here, here again, he says in verse 13, and this uh, also is something that's very important to uh, uh, what, what the reason that God told him. In verse 13, no servant can serve two masters. Amen. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or Amen. man. And I want you to uh, look over with me, if you would, to Matthew's Gospel. Just a minute. I want to read something. It's a continuation of this right here. Uh, and it's in, in uh, 624. There it is. Yeah. 
It's the same thing, but it, he, he adds a little bit to it. In verse 24 of chapter 6, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and them. Amen. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on it. It is... Is it not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, and here's here's the reason why that he's saying uh, not to be concerned about uh, things in, in this life. Listen, uh, he says here, he says in our lesson, therefore I say that you take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on it, put on it is is not the life more than meat mm -hmm. and the body than raiment. So behold, well, he gives an example. Behold the fowl, fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more not much better than they? And we, we need we need we need to grasp this, people. Mm -hmm. Because listen, this is what Jesus told the disciples, and listen, they were fixing to go out and go through some hard times. And so he said, Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the excuse me, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Amen. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God Amen. and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of it itself. So vision unto the day is the evil thereof. And so there will be trouble and challenges mm -hmm. and and these things, but listen, if you're if you if you know the Lord Jesus Christ and listen, people you, you should have been you should be trying and, and I'm saying this uh, not not hatefully or nothing like this, but you should be praying to him. Mm -hmm. You should be asking him uh, because listen he, he, he wants you to ask him. Mm -hmm. He wants you to present to, to him. He knows what your problem is. But listen, ask him and, 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 and try him and, and, and see if he, if he won't stick to his word. If you do what you're supposed to, listen, it don't make no difference. Come, as old saying is, come hell or high water. Listen, he will answer his prayer. He will answer his his word and he'll answer your prayers and and you can you can be assured of that but all you have to do is take that first step like peter did on the water and he walked on the water and you need to take that step towards trusting in the lord jesus mm -hmm. christ to take care of your needs and your desires because he will do these things so back in our lesson one more, one more a little bit more we'll, we'll wind up <clears throat> now <clears throat> in verse 14 after he had said this about uh, you cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all of these things and they derived him or they made fun of him and his covetous means they were they were money lovers and, uh, and, and he said in verse 15 and he said unto them ye are they which, which justify yourself before men but God knoweth your heart for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. And so anything that's highly esteemed of man 
and man praises and man loves and all this. Listen, the most of the time it's an abomination in the sight of God because uh, what man thinks and what man loves is mostly worth. Amen. So now, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than one till of the law to fail. Amen. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another, committeth adultery, and whosoever marrieth her that is put away uh, from her husband committeth adultery. And listen, he's not, he's not really, I mean, he's using this, but listen, what he's he's getting another point across too. Listen, if you if you turn your back on the Lord and, and you start serving some something else in this world, listen. It's it's a dangerous situation, mm -hmm. and you're you're going to be sort of like the the servant that uh, the rich man found cheating. Uh, you're going to you're going to get in trouble. And he said, uh, uh, "I'm too I'm too proud to dig." And so the thing that it was, he lost he lost uh, a lot of his uh, 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 ability to. Uh, be a high high dollar man so anyway this is what we wanted to try to bring out to you this morning and and hope that that something that that we said here or that we read will help you mm -hmm. a little bit farther down the road because Amen. that's what we're here for this morning is it's a gas station <laughs> if you want to mm -hmm. and we, we we want to fill up this morning that we can get on down the road a little bit farther. And and that road is to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I hope this morning that something has been a help to you in some way. So thank y'all for listening to my uh, readings. Amen. Amen.